Hi, everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Very much excited for having you as we continue with our discussion towards the ICA November 2021 examination. And I see some of you guys uh, joining. You are welcome. This is another Q&A session that we are doing in our series as we uh, look at various things that we need to focus on. As we look at the areas we need to focus on in order for us to pass the examination and most importantly become uh, successful in that case. So give us a thumbs up on the video when you join, but most importantly, share the video. Let us reach as many students as possible. Then comment in the chat for me, any questions you have for me, things you would want me to share my thought on, put it in the chat, put it in the comment section. I'm going to be reading all of your comments as we uh, hit on the discussion in that particular case, as we hit on the discussion in that case. Okay, so Johnny Walker on Facebook said, hello, sir. Hi, Johnny Walker. I hope you're doing well. I see some of you guys joining on YouTube. You are welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video and then share the video. Let us reach as many students as possible on the live stream today. Again, today I'm gonna be providing you with some strategies that you need to adopt to uh, study specific subjects as you prepare for the uh, examination. Yesterday I shared with you four key things that you need to look at. Uh, in order for you to pass the examination and i uh, made mention of the fact that it is very important for you to identify what are the key areas that are going to be in the exam hall it is important to for you to look at your study uh your study plan and find out what you have done so far what are you left with to do and then also number three you need to make sure that okay you ask yourself based on the key topics based on the key subjects what are the difficulties or challenges that I have in the specific subjects, in the specific topics. And then the last thing is that you need to now redesign your uh, study plan and also redesign or modify your learning strategy in order for you to increase your chances of passing the examination in that case. So that is what I shared with you yesterday on the live stream. Today, I'm going to be providing you with some specific strategies as well as we continue with our discussion. And let me know Whatever questions you have for me, put it in the chat, put it in the comments session for me because I'm reading all of your comments and I'll be replying to them as we continue with the discussion in that case. Now, remember that um, our master class for corporate reporting and financial reporting students, it's coming on uh, next two weeks. I'll be next week, Sunday actually next week sunday 19th and uh so if it is something that you you can check it out you can check the description the first link in the description you go on the website look at the terms and conditions very well and if it is something that will be comfortable for you or you'll be comfortable with you can enroll in it and join me it is going to be four sundays where i focus on specific key issues that you need to look out for in order for you to pass the examination in that case so let me pick some questions coming up here some comments coming up here uh let's see what we have so johnny walker said i'm not writing any examining examination for now but i hope today be your one of your students whenever i return to ghana i hope to be one of your students whenever i return to ghana all right that is uh great to hear uh johnny walker I'm really enjoying listening. I really enjoy listening to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I see some of you guys coming in, coming in with any questions you have for me. But like I said, I want to share with you some specific strategies that uh, you need to implement if you really, really want to become successful and take your career and everything to the next level in that particular case. Let me bring up my uh, notes part as we get into the discussion uh, in that case. So one of the things that you need to understand is that, like I mentioned yesterday, whatever subject that you pick, there are key areas or key issues that you need to look out for, okay? So there are key areas or key issues that you need to look out for 
when we talk about the issue in that case. I see a comment coming up. Let me see if I can uh, take that comment real quick. Um, Isaac Norte said, please, any master class for management accounting? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there will be any master class for MA. We'll be having our executive uh, master class, but it will be strictly for our enrolled students, like students who are learning directly under my mentorship. So uh, our master class for man accounting will be just strictly for our paid students. It's not going to be open uh, to the public uh, in that case. So we will do that, but it will be strictly to our students. It's the financial reporting and corporate reporting uh, master class that uh, we are going to be opening to the public. And purposely, that is done for the public in that case. So Isaac, unfortunately, there will be a master class, but it will be strictly to our students, and uh, it will all be open for others to join. So for whatever subject that you are learning, there are key areas that you need to understand. And to be able to increase your chances of passing the examination, it is important for you to understand these key areas and know what your challenges are. So let's say you are doing something like management accounting. So let's say you're doing management accounting. Now, if you are writing management accounting, definitely in the exam hall, we're going to be having a question on budgeting. Okay? Definitely in the exam hall, we're going to be having a question on variance. Definitely in the exam hall, we're going to be having a question relating to short-term decisions. Now, let me end here. I could uh, mention a lot, but let me just end here. But a question that you uh, uh, look at it, it's that when it comes to the budgeting, for instance, what are the key issues in budgeting? Now, when it comes to budgeting, broadly, we have the theories, okay? And then we have the computations or the calculation aspect. Now, when you are looking at a calculation aspect, you are looking at issues like the functional budgets and then the master budget. So if you take budgeting and uh, budgetary control in the management accounting syllabus, whether I like it or not, there is going to be a question in the exam hall for this. All right, for this. Now, if there is a, going to be a question in the exam hall for this, what then do you do? You need to ask yourself, what is the problem about a functional budget? When it comes to the functional budget, we have the sales budget, the production unit budget, the labor budget, the material budget. We have the uh, issue in relation to the cash budget. Then we come to the budgeted profit or loss, the budgeted statement of financial position in that case. Now, these are the things that are going to be there. So you need to ask yourself, okay, when it comes to budgeting, what areas am I having challenges with? Okay, probably your problem is about preparation of cash budget. That is your challenge. All right, then you need to find out what is the principle underlying cash budget. Then you practice a lot of questions in that regard. That is the idea about the variances. For instance, definitely in the exam order there will be a question on variance. Definitely. So the question you ask yourself is, okay, so how do I understand? What are the key issues? Again, when it comes to the variances, we have the theories, and then we have the computations. When it comes under the computations, we have issues such as um, the preparation of, or the calculation of the va basic variances. Okay? Then we have the advanced variances. Then... We can talk about the reconciliation of profit. These are the three key issues you need to understand when it comes to uh, the issue about what? The computation aspect of variance analysis. Whether you like it or not, it will be in the exam hall. Okay? So what do you do? You need to find out which part of these whole things don't I understand. Probably the basic variance, you don't have a problem with that. Direct labor rate variance, material uh, price variance, uh, factory uh, fixed overheads, uh, expenditure variance. Maybe you don't have a problem with those. But then when it comes to where the entity produces more than one product, and so they are using 
or the entity produces more than one product, then you're going to be calculating the sales mix variance, the sales quantity variance, and all of those things. How do you go about it? Then when it comes to the fact that the entity uses more than one raw materials, then we're going to be having the material mix variance and the material yield variance. If the uh, entity uses more than one labor force, then you're going to be having what? The uh, issue about... Um, labor mix variance and then the labor yield variance in that case then there are also what is called the material price planning variance then the material price operational variance so you must ask yourself all these variances which one is it that when i sleep and wake up i can easily do and which one is challenging for me you identify that you identify that for short-term decisions we know that marginal costing is going to be the fundamental rule. Now, even though I'm doing this for marginal costing, it's actually going to cut across to all of the subjects. So whatever subject you're doing, you pick each topic and you interrogate it on this level. So when it comes to uh, short-term decisions, yes, we have the limiting factor analysis. We have the make or buy. Then break-even analysis or cost volume profit analysis, we could have something uh, in that. That is a short-term uh, decision. Pricing decisions. We could put the throughput accounting uh, ratio. All these are short-term decisions. And there are simple principles. Then definitely my favorite, relevant cost analysis. That's my favorite. Relevant cost analysis. So the issue about that is these are the short-term decisions. So you have to ask yourself, among these, what are the challenges I have? What is it that I, 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 I don't understand? Which of these topics is actually a headache for me? And most of the time, one of the topics that is headache for students is limiting factor analysis and then the relevant cost analysis, especially the relevant cost analysis, because I always say that if your English is not good, you're screwed about relevant cost analysis because uh, you need to read a question, interrogate it, understand. So, for instance, the entity has won't need a material of say 2000 they already have 100 of that but the 100 of that is not in constant use but the entity can use it for another project or they can sell it at this price how do you get a relevant cost so, so that is the idea so what i want you to do at this point is to whatever subject you are writing look at the topics and interrogate the topics and find on yourself, not, not just the topics of the whole syllabus, but then the key areas that will be in the syllabus, you ask yourself, what the heck am I going to do? What do I have strength in and what don't I have strength in? That is very important. That is very, very critical in that case. Now, I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome. This is a Q&A session and me also providing you with some ideas on how you can study specific subjects to increase your chances of passing the exams. If you join us, comment in the comment section, comment in the chat box, any questions that you have for me, I'm going to be replying to all your comments. So put them in the chat for me, put them in the comment section for me. I want to hear from you. Let me know what exactly you want me to share my thought on in that case. So that is a sneak peek about management accounting. Now, I just spoke about the three topics, three broad topics in uh, management accounting, which are critical which are critical. Are you getting the idea? So if these are critical, what are the areas you have problem with? How do we dig that problem out? How do we solve the problem in that particular case? And that is very, very critical in that. Then another thing you must understand is ethics. Like I've said over and over again, now the ICA syllables, a lot of subjects now have ethics featured in it. If you are doing management accounting, ethics is there. If you are doing financial reporting, ethics is there. If you are doing audit and assurance, ethics is there. Strategy case study, ethics is there. Uh, advanced taxation, there are elements of ethics there. Corporate reporting, there are ethics there. So ethics is also a very key area. Like I said, or like I keep on saying, it's not just about understanding the fundamental codes of ethics, the threats to code of ethics, but it's about contextualizing them to the question so you have to ask yourself when it comes to the ethics what is my problem 
What is my problem? Because you need to identify the threat, and then you find out the significance of the threat, and then you find out what safeguards can the entity put in place in that particular case. So what kind of threat are we looking at? What, save, what is the significance of it, and what safeguards can we put in place in that case? So that is the issue about that, and that is one of just, just one of the things in that case. I see a comment coming in from Isaac. He said, thanks, but I'm worried. Uh, why are you worried? What are you worried about, Isaac? Let me know in the comment section. What are you worried about? Now, let me know if there are any questions for me. Put them in the chat for me. Put them in the comment section. I'm reading all your comments and share my thoughts on them as we continue with our discussion. Isaac Norte Okran, what are you worried about? So that is the first thing you need to understand. Look at the topics and ask yourself, what are the key areas? Look at the uh, subject you are writing. Ask yourself, what are the key areas? That's how you become successful. That is how you make it happen uh, in that particular case. That's how you call the shot when it comes to dealing with that issue there. And that's important. That's very, very basic in that manner. Now, the next thing that you need to understand is, apart from identifying the subjects, the topics, da 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 da, is practice of questions. Now, you need to be able to practice questions to increase your chances of passing the exams and understanding what you are learning in that case and understanding what you are learning in that case. But let me say this. Let me say this because it's very, very important. So let me say this. I've seen people who tell me that, Inshira, I have solved all the questions, but I still went and failed. You see, there is what I've shared with you before if you're a follower of my work, what I call the academic success triangle. Now, it is a module I developed on how you can actually prepare for the exams and pass for the exams. Now, what do I mean by that? What it means is that, number one, when it comes to whatever subject you're writing, the first thing you want to do is to understand the key concepts and the principle. You understand the key concepts and the principles. So what are the key concepts and principles underlining the subject that I'm learning? So for instance, you pick financial reporting. Okay? So let's say you're doing financial reporting. What are the key issues that I need to look out for? You must go. Standards are critical. You must understand enough of the standards. Ethics is going to be basic. Something you need to understand. Ratios is going to be basic. Something you need to understand. As you are doing the single uh, the standards, you are indirectly also looking at single entity, okay, financial statements as well. In that case, that's a standard. That's basic in that manner. So you need to understand the basic concept. That's the first thing. Second is to have an examination analysis document. Now, what is an examination analysis document? The examination analysis document is simply a document that provides you with the key areas of the syllabus that you need to focus on for that particular exams. Key areas for the exams. Not key areas for the general exams alone, but key areas for that particular diet of examination. Now, based on that, you go to the third step, and that is to practice questions. That is to practice questions. 
So it starts from understanding the principles, step one, getting an examination analysis document, step two, and then three, practicing a lot of questions in that case. Practicing a lot of questions in that case. That's the idea. But what I see is people spend enough time solving questions. They will solve all ICA past questions from 1961, I don't know, to 2020. What are you doing to yourself? Now, what are you doing? So it is not just about how many past questions you solve. It's about understanding the principles. It's, under, it's about understanding the concepts. Because if you skip step one, not spend time to understand the principles and the concepts, what is going to be happening ultimately is that you pick the question and you don't even understand exactly what is going on in that case. So you pick the question, all right, but you don't understand exactly what is going on in that case. So you could solve the question, uh, you read the solution, you go to another question, you read the solution, you go to another question, you read the solution. But the most important thing is that the more you uh, read or solve the questions, the more confused you become at the end of the day. At the end of the day. So that is the issue about that. I see some of you guys coming up. Let me know if you have any questions real quick. As I continue with my discussion, now I see a comment coming in from Nicholas. Good evening, sir. Please help in IAS 38. Osafo has a year end of da 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 da. Has a year end of this an operator factory which makes computer chips for mobile phones. It purchased a machine on 3 July 2013 for 80,000, which had a useful life of 10 years, depreciated on straight line basis. Time apportioning in the year of acquisition and disposal. The machine was revalued to 81,000 in February, July 20,000. There's no change in the useful life. A fire at the factory, da, 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 da. I don't know, maybe you're trying to type a question. I wouldn't solve this question for you. Uh, the reason is simple, because I don't solve questions like this, because chances are it is somebody's assignment or somebody's uh, take-home exercise and uh, you are putting it here for me to solve. I receive a lot of those things. So chances are I'm not going to be solving that question uh, for you today uh, in that case. That is under IAS 16, but I'm not going to solve it for you. And the reason I'm not solving it is the reason that I just gave you in that particular case. So if you have a specific question you want to ask me, you ask me. But I will not solve that question because, like I said, that could be someone's take-home assignment or uh, someone's test, and I don't do that. I don't do that. People reach out to me a lot to uh, solve questions for you, them, assignment for them. I don't do that. So, unfortunately, Nicholas, I will not solve this question for you, but if you have a specific question about IAS 16 that you want me to share my thought on, I will share my thought on, but I will not solve the question. So Edu Jomo said, thanks, Ishira, you got this. Always a pleasure. Uh, Ntile said, uh, good evening, Ishira. Good evening. Um, I hope that you're doing well. Any questions for me real quick? Any questions for me real quick? I see some of you guys joining. Give us a thumbs up on the video when you join. And comment in the comment section for me any questions that you have that you want me to share my thoughts on in that case. So that is the, that is the issue. So 
yes, you have to practice. So after you identify the key areas of the syllabus and uh, what you need to look out for in that case, you need to what? Practice a lot of questions. But don't just practice questions if you don't know, if you don't understand the basic principles. That is going to be really, really helpful in that case. Another comment coming in from Fatal said, um, good evening, sir. Please, how do we treat dividend paid by a parent to a subsidiary? Dividend paid by a parent to a subsidiary, they've already paid the dividend. So it is deducted from the group retained earnings. If you are preparing the statement of profit or loss at the end of the day, it's deducted from the... Uh, I don't know what statement you are preparing because if you make a statement like this, it's generic. So you, you have not asked anything. Dividend paid to subsidiary, uh, in what context? Because like I said, if you are preparing the consolidated statement of financial position, whatever dividend paid has to be deducted from the group retained earnings for the period under consideration in that case. So maybe contextualize, let me know. If it is cash flow, dividend paid to subsidiaries, that will be part of investing activities. And uh, that will be there because dividend paid to subsidiary shareholder NCIs, uh, at the end of the day, uh, in that case, because if you say a parent pays a dividend even to a subsidiary, I don't even understand it because the parents will not pay dividend to a subsidiary. They will pay dividend to the shareholders of the company. So parents doesn't pay dividend to subsidiary. So I don't know the context in which your question is, but if you can provide some context, Maybe I can provide you with a better understanding in that case. Okay, so Nicholas is back and said, okay, sir, I came across it while studying, but my solution was totally different from the solution. But I follow the principle. That is IS 16 and IS 36. From the prefix of the question that I'm seeing here, I don't know why IAS 36 is coming into the picture. Because they bought a machine. So which one is IAS 36? Wow. I don't know though. Especially the calculation of depreciation. Oh, okay. Okay, I think the question is incomplete because you are like a fire at the factory on 1st October 2016, damage, da 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 da. Okay, so probably that is where the impairment is coming in. Uh, in that case, okay, I get it. Uh, so, like I said, I will not solve that question for you. Uh, you, you have to look at whatever solution that has been provided, since you said it is provided to you, and then find out the reasons why the calculations were done that way uh, in that case. Taking into consideration the year, because the financial statement are prepared on 31st December. Um, however, you realize that they purchased the asset on 1st July 2013. Then they revalued the asset also on 1st July 2014. And it is a time apportion uh, depreciation. So I think there should be a way to do that. Like I said, I've given you the reason why I will not uh, solve the question because, I, because of that. Biashiba Gihu said, needed this video. Okay, that's awesome. Biashiba, thanks for joining us. If there are any questions, put it in the chat, put it in the comment for me as I uh, share some thought with you. So number one, like I said, know the key areas of whatever subject you are writing. That's the first thing. Number two is practice a lot of questions. But like I said, 
Don't practice a question without understanding the principles because you give yourself emotional trauma. Because you pick the question you solve, you don't understand. You pick the question you solve, you didn't get. You pick the question you solve, you didn't get. But you are forgetting to apply the principle. Not only that, you need an examination analysis document who provides you a guidelines on the key areas for the exams as well as the key uh, issues you have to focus on for that particular examination diet. Then, once you have these, you can solve specific questions in that case. Now, so where do you get questions to practice? Where do you get questions to practice? Yes, you can start with the CA pass questions, but you don't want to spend a lot of time on that because nothing in the pass questions 99.9% .9 of the time will be relevant for you in the forthgoing examination. So you can start with the ICA pass question, but don't benchmark on it a lot. Because I've seen people even selling the ICA past questions. And uh, I don't know why they, they do that and people buy it. I've had people calling me that they are selling it, whether our students will buy. And I'm like, the thing is on the ICA website and you are selling. And the fun part is that they just downloaded and printed and they are selling the thing. Because there are some of the old uh, past questions of the ICA. There are a couple of uh, mistakes, typos, and errors in the uh, solutions. And you see all of these carried out in some of these uh, materials that people go around and sell uh, in that case. But that's a starting point. You can start with a CA uh, pass questions. But then you need to get a question kit or the question bank of the ICA. That is also uh, a very good material that can assist you a lot because there are a lot of questions in it. Uh, and the fun part is that they categorize the questions and the topics. So if you finish with short-term decisions, if you have the management accounting question kit, all you do is to go to short-term decisions and you solve all the questions or you go through all the questions or as many of the questions as you can in that case. So the question kit is going to be helpful in that case. Then you can also check out some ACCA past questions or questions from other sources, maybe... Uh, some MBA questions from a university, whatever, UPSA, Cape Coast, KNUST, uh, Legon. You can check questions coming in from these sources and uh, just expose yourself, okay? Just expose yourself in that particular case. So that is what the second thing that I want you to understand when it comes to how you're going to prepare yourself for the exams. Then the last thing that I want to share with you as you revise for your exams is discipline. Discipline. Listen, you will not pass the exam if you are not a disciplined person. And this is very, very critical. And I want to talk about this very well to you in that case. You cannot pass the exams if you are not discipline enough you cannot pass the exams if you are not disciplined enough because some of you you have a lot of excuses hanging around your neck a lot of excuses hanging around your neck oh insure my job oh insure my uh spouse oh insure my child Oh, Inshira, by the time I don't go to work early, by the time I close from work, I am tired. Oh, Inshira, hmm, I couldn't even study you. What the heck are you doing? Then don't write the exams. Because you see, some of you go into the exam more like it is a lottery. Do you understand it? Some of you register for the exams like it is a lottery. Because I've heard people tell me that, oh, Inshira, I'm registering to see if I can pass this. And I'm like, you are registering to see if you can pass. Because this person is not learning. What are you going to do in the exam hall? They go and they fail. Then they say, hey, this ICA, this ICA. So you, you, you see people. One of the dumbest things I hear from people is that ICA exams is difficult. Whatever you do, you fail. Whatever you do, you fail. I, 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 I have written this paper. Huh? Do you study? 90% or 99% of the people who say some of these dumb stuffs don't have time to study. 
So if you are going to pass the ICA examination, everything I've shared with you is great. Yesterday, I shared with you some critical strategies. Today, I've shared with you some critical issues that you need to look out for. Nothing of these will make you successful if you don't discipline yourself. It's not going to be happening on your own volition. It's not just going to be there now, boom then it happens. It's not going to be there, but this is not lottery. This is not gambling. So, because if people say the ICSM is difficult and they are rating, they are rating, they are not passing, your common sense should tell you that some people pass the exams. At least 25% of the people pass the exams. At least 15% of the people pass the exams. At least 40% of the people pass the exams. So if you have been writing the exams and you don't pass the exams, let me suggest to you that you have not disciplined yourself to write the exams. The professional course is tough. And like I said, all these excuses are valid. Your job is on the line. Your spouse is taking your time. Your children are taking your time. Everything else is taking your time. Probably you are also a Bustapeni uh, family head. And every funeral you attend, every party you attend, every dumb stuff you go there, you cannot become successful by pleasing everybody and being around everybody, trying to be liked by everybody. It's not going to happen. Now, I'm not advising you about how you should run your life or whatever the heck it is. But what I'm telling you is this. Whatever I shared with you yesterday, whatever I've shared with you today, whatever I've been telling you so far, it will not be possible. You will not benefit from it if you don't discipline yourself. I've shared before on this platform that you should prepare a steady plan. How many of you prepared a steady plan? Okay. You prepared it. How many of you followed the steady, the steady plan and you still follow it? How many of you block time that you are studying so that even if your favorite show is being aired on TV or whatever it is, or a new series has just dropped on Netflix or Apple Plus TV or Hulu or whatever streaming platform you are on, you still put it on hold and you are like, I got to study. I need to be by my book. How many of you have that kind of discipline? That is the thing you need to become successful. Not just pass the exams, but to become successful. So, how disciplined are you? Listen, your job, nobody cares about it. Do you think the ICA has a marking scheme for people who are married and people who are not married? There is no marking scheme like that. Do they have marking scheme for people who are working and people who are not working? There is no marking scheme like that. Do we have marking scheme for people who have <coughs> five children and people who are single? No, it is the same marking scheme. And that is how life is. You are going to be judged. You are going to be monitored. You are going to be promoted. You are going to become successful. But the criteria, the benchmark is the same for everybody else. So if you want to be at the top, then you have to change your mind. You have to discipline yourself to become successful. This is not a motivation speech. I tell you all the time, if you need motivation to become successful, probably you don't even have a, a dream in the first place, or maybe your dream is not big enough, so go sleep somewhere. This is not a motivational speak. I'm just trying to tell you how the world is so that you stop giving yourself those dumb excuses that you need to give yourself. Because sometimes I get tired of it when I hear a lot of people talking about it. Oh, Shirahe, my job. Oh, hmm. Shirahe, what I have to do? Eh, hmm. Shirahe, eh, hmm, 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 hmm. Sakwa, sakwa, just like that. You cannot become successful. You cannot become successful. So that is what you need to understand, basically, when it comes to uh, what you need to do in order for you to pass the examination. So everything that I've shared with you, all the strategies, all the techniques, all the approaches, everything that I've told you about, you will not make it done. It cannot happen if you're not ready to discipline yourself. So you have to be ready. You have to be willing to discipline yourself if you want to pass this exams. It's straightforward.
It's straightforward. It's straightforward. So, the honors lies on you. Are you ready to be successful? Are you ready to pass the exams? Some of you, you hate your job. Some of you, when you wake up in the morning and you're going to work, you wish you cannot, you, you won't go to work. You hate your job. You don't like your job. Why? Because you don't like the environment. But why do you have to go? You have to go because that is the only source you can get money from to pay your rent, to pay your bills, to take care of yourself, and to buy food. You hate it, but you still go. Why won't you change your life so you do what you love and be passionate about it? So some of you are literally dying, not because you're sick, but because of the hatred you harbor in yourself for your job, for your career, for your office. There are some of you, if we offer you check and say, stop working today, you will kneel down and say, praise be to God. And you want to change your life. And you know the way you can change your life is by becoming a chartered accountant, by passing this examination. Some of you, in finishing level two and getting to level three can get you to another level so you can earn more money. Why the heck give yourself excuses? Why the heck stop yourself from becoming successful? Why the heck keep on talking about my job, my spouse, my children? Nobody cares about anything. Nobody cares about anything. You are married, go to hell. You have children, we don't care about it. Your job, you are too busy, go sleep somewhere else. You think the Institute Children Accountant thinks about that? No. You think any school thinks about that? No. You have to model yourself, structure yourself, discipline yourself, structure your time, manage yourself in such a manner that in, in, in the midst of all that, you can still upgrade yourself. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you. Because the same environment, the same thing you are screaming about, somebody is able to leverage on that to become successful. So that is what I want to leave you with today. 16 weeks to go. You better discipline yourself. If you're willing to pass the exam and you want to pass the exams, then you have to discipline yourself. That's the only way you can pass these exams. That's the only way you can become successful. Remember, like I tell you all the time, my goal is not just for you to pass the exams. My goal is to change your outlook, the way you see life, so that when you change your mindset about life, your attitude about life, that is how you become successful. That's how you become successful. So that is what I'm leaving you with today. Um, Augustine Boatin said, good evening, sir. Good evening, Augustine. I hope you're doing well. So that is the deal. Okay? That is the deal. So everything we've spoken about, all the beautiful strategies I shared with you yesterday you were excited about, today you are excited about, will only be successful if you are willing to discipline yourself. What is discipline? Discipline is... Knowing that this thing is what gives me pleasure, but if I continue to do it, it takes me away from my goal, so I stop it. <laughs> then I go and do what has to be done for my goal. That's discipline. Everybody is going out. Everybody is chilling. Everybody is attending wedding, funeral, and all manner of events. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be behind my book. I'm going to commit to the next two years work on myself, and become successful. That is what you got to do. If you have written the ICA exam before, and you fail the exams, and you are resitting for the paper, you, gotta, you, you better have a different attitude. You can't continue. Because you have to ask yourself, why the hell did I, face, did I fail the first time? And you realize that the reason you failed the first time is that you did not discipline yourself. And some of you, you are still waiting. You are not serious right now. You are waiting one week to the exams, two weeks to the exams, three days to the exams, you start being serious. Do you think we are gambling here? You think we are gambling that you can just walk in, in, into, into the shop or into the gambling house or into the place and then just place a bet and go away? You think that is what we're doing here? You think that is how you pass the exams? No. No, because some of you are gambling with your life, but you don't know. So if you wrote the ICA exams and you failed for some reason, 
This time around, if you are going again, you better promise yourself that you're going to pass. And find out to do whatever it is you must do legitimately. And for your information, if there is anything you have to do, you have to start as soon as possible. As a matter of fact, you have to start right now. Because discipline is the key to ultimate success and growth. That is what I want to share with you today. And thank you for joining me on the live stream. Prince Aqua said, I'm going to pass this time, I promise. That's awesome. I pray that you uh, are able to discipline yourself and work hard on yourself because that is very critical so you can actually pass the examination and uh, become successful in that case. So that is basically it. That's what I'm leaving you with uh, today. And uh, God willing, next week, we will continue with our discussions on the stream. And uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram, and we'll be looking at it in that case. For those of you writing financial reporting and corporate reporting, remember that our masterclass uh, is coming on from next week, Sunday. And uh, you can check the description of this video, uh, the first link. You can go on our website, read the terms and conditions carefully. If it is something that you can, because that is not for everybody, it's for People who are ready to be disciplined, people who are ready to walk away from their dumb excuses and uh, become more successful in what they are doing in that case. So that will be what I want to share with you today. And uh, God willing, next week, we will continue with our discussion. Nicholas said, thanks, sir. God bless you. God bless you to Nicholas. And thanks for joining us on the live stream. So that is it about it. Um, my prayer and hope is that you you pass the exams, but you know, prayers, fasting, uh, and other things don't work if you don't do anything on your part. And it's not just being like a testicle about it. It's about really, really going in there, putting in more effort so you can do well. So stay blessed. Have a blissful weekend. And we'll continue next week in our discussion. Bye-bye.